So how do you grow? Is it because you have more cells, bigger cells, or both more and bigger cells? Uh, what do you got, Jess? More cells. How many people say more cells, letter A? Really? Anybody say B, bigger cells? Anybody say C, both more and bigger? Why did you say C? Why did you say C, Mike? Oh, I thought you just raised your hand a second ago when I said you said C. I thought I saw your hand. I would say C. That's not really the right answer, but let me give you this. Let me give you this idea. Okay? Why would I say both more and bigger cells? Well, don't they have to get bigger before you get more? Well, I don't know. Let's take a look at that a second. Let's talk about that. A is really the correct answer. You actually have more cells. Okay? Except in a couple of cases. For example, I'm going to use Justin as my example today. Everybody, for those of you that are listening to this, this is Justin Howe. Justin Howe has been lifting weights. He has gotten, he has gotten larger. But it is not because he has more muscle cells. Muscle cells get bigger, not more. After a certain period of time in your life. Now, he might be still at the stage where he could get more. But if a shark were to take a bite out of your life tomorrow, which means you would have to be at the ocean tomorrow, which would be kind of fun anyway, okay, except for the shark bite thing. If a shark were to take a bite, thank you for laughing. If a shark were to take a bite out of your leg, that muscle will not grow back. Okay? That muscle won't grow back. It's gone. Okay, I don't know. Fun thought. That's why I don't swim in the ocean. I'm not at the top of the food chain. Therefore, I stay away. Okay, that's why I don't go to Africa. I'm not at the top of the food chain. Just me. Sorry. Anyway, so some cells get bigger, but you're not technically growing. They're just staying in place and getting bigger. Okay, or fat cells also just get bigger. Although you do kind of make more of those. You can make more fat cells. We'll refer back to that later. Okay? But technically it's A. You are more cells now than you were 10 years ago. Some of you are more cells now than you were one year ago. And so that comes, begs the question as to why? Why is there a limit? Why is there a limit in cell growth? And so let's talk about that. Any ideas? If cells get too big, has everything, hint, has everything to do with what we've just been talking about before this. If they get too big, they'll explode. Not that. Well, I know what they do. But why don't they just keep growing? Why can't we have single-celled organisms that are this big? There's a reason. And the reason is this. Since I'm going to tell you, since nobody wants to venture a guess. Go ahead, Jess. You should know. Water, no. If a cell gets too big, they can't get things in and out through their cell membrane efficiently enough. And I'm going to show you a couple examples of this. But essentially, there becomes too few ways in and out. supposed to link to something else, but it doesn't. My example is 
you can remember, don't have to write this down. But like highways into a city. Here's Chicago. Okay, this is a picture of Chicago. How have you been through Chicago on a road in your life? I see. But maybe everybody. So you haven't been through Chicago on a road in your life. So if you go to Chicago, there's like seven interstate highways that go into Chicago. And out. Some of them are like eight lanes. Four on a side. Five on a side, I think, a couple. Coopersville has zero. In fact, into the city of Coopersville, there's one street, it's one lane. Into downtown, right? One one way street. Downtown Chicago, seven interstates, whole bunch of other roads. Why? Yeah, but is it bigger because of the roads? So there's more roads because of the, the fact that the city's bigger, right? Why do roads have to be, why do you have to have more roads into Chicago than into Coopersville? Really? For more people going in and out? I disagree. You have to get stuff in. What do you have to get in? Food, right? To feed the people. What do you have to get out? Their waste, right? Now you're thinking of it as, you're not thinking of this like, but really, what do you need to get in? If, if you live in Coopersville, what's the number one thing you need to have in Coopersville? Food and water. There has to be a way to get food in and a way to get water in. There has to be a way to get rid of the junk. That's it. Everything else is just extra. Same thing with Chicago. So if you think about that as far as cells go, let's talk about limit. Let's, you don't have to write this down. This is just information right here. The smallest cells are about a micron, which is a micrometer is one thousandth of a millimeter, which is, as we'll pretty soon measure your hair and you'll figure out how much that is compared to your hair. Okay, the biggest cells are our cells, and human egg cells about a hundred microns, or about one tenth of a millimeter across, which means, yes, you can see a human egg cell. Okay, it's about the size of this period right here. Well, that's probably a little big, actually. It's about the size of a normal, like if I was looking at this piece of paper right here, there's a dot right here that I was printed by my computer. That size. So, small, but big enough to see. Okay? Why is there a limit? Well, the limit is something called surface to volume ratio. And again, I'm not going to ask you to regurgitate this, but I want you to understand it. Okay, this, I didn't make this slide, so I might get some crazy, stupid stuff popping up. Don't worry about it. As the cell gets bigger, its volume increases faster than its surface area. So let me show you a quick example of this. Oh, my God. I'll do this over here. There's a, here's a, here's a cube. When I was in detention, I actually used to draw cubes for a half hour. I got pretty good at drawing cubes. I draw three-dimensional cubes and one-dimensional cubes. And yes, I had detentions once in a while. Here's a cube one centimeter on every side. One. What's the surface area of this space? This one? And so on. So the whole surface area is six, let's say, centimeters squared. What's the volume of that cube? One times one times one, which is? One cc. One. So the surface area to volume ratio is six to one. Now let's make one ten times. Let's make one just for fun, hundred times bigger. I'll make it ten times bigger because I can't draw one hundred times bigger on the page. Okay. We'll draw a box. Kind of a trippy box, I know, but I'm gonna read. Okay. Here's a box cube, ten centimeters on a side. What's the area of this space? 10 times 10, 100. Right? Times 6. So the surface area is 600. What's the volume? 10 times 10. Times 10, come on, people. 1,000. So the ratio of surface area to volume is 6 to 10. So there's 10 times more volume than there is surface area. What does that mean? 
Well, the volume of a cell means there's more room for mitochondrions and ribosomes and things like that, right? So the cell produces 10 times more material, but has the same amount of room to get it out. Does that make any sense? Plus, it also needs 10 times more material then, right? But it has the same amount of room to get it out, essentially. So, it's, so what we've done is we've made the city bigger, but not increased the number of rows. That's not going to be good for anything. So, when a cell... So what a cell needs is what determines its limit. In a large cell, you cannot move material in and out of the cell fast enough to support life. That you should know. The bigger the cell, the harder it is to get things in and out. So if the cell gets too big, what does it do? Whoops. What's the solution? Instead of staying as one cell, just make many. You know what I'm right about. Okay? So if a cell wants to get bigger, rather than get much bigger, it just makes more of itself. It divides. Okay, now some organisms are a single cell. Some, most organisms are multi, I should say that. Most organisms are single cell. Most different kinds of organisms are multi cell. And so, what does the cell do? Mitosis. And that's what I want to take not very long to talk about today. How many of you have heard of mitosis before? Everybody, I hope. Not Kaylee? Okay. Everybody else has heard of mitosis before? So there shouldn't be too much. We're going to add a couple things that have to do with cancer, actually, that we're going to have to talk about from before. Okay? The part of the cell's life where it divides is called mitosis. An important thing here is some cells never divide. We'll come back to that. Okay? Some cells never divide. Once they're adult cells. Muscle cells are those kinds. I'm just going to put this all up here and then light, and we'll talk about it. The important part is to copy the DNA of a cell and distribute it equally to both cells. DNA is contained in packets called chromosomes, and in mitosis, it's the chromosomes that are divided equally. I am not going to have you regurgitate these to me on a test. Interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Do you remember the thing, though? Do you remember hearing that? I have you much all the time. Interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. If met, do you have any for biology, Scott? And you don't remember? Oh. you're frantically writing that down, don't. You'll not be asked to go back over that, except we're going to do a little lab with that right now. Uh, we're going to look for cells at each phase just to get the concept of what happens in cell division. Okay? Uh, one thing, and I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, and we'll finish this up next time when we talk about it, is interphase actually has some stages we need to talk about. Because it's here, it's problems that happen in cell division that cause cancer. Okay? Cancer is a pretty simple disease that way. It's problems in cell division that cause cancer. It's in mitosis where the problem lies. Okay? And things like smoking and things like that cause those problems in cell division. Does that make sense or not? Okay, so we'll talk about that next time too.